a lot of organizations, labs, and companies organize their data in spreadsheets and databases. These two types of applications model their data in terms of tables, where you've got rows and columns. Well, if you want to write a program that can process that data, it helps to have a file format that's easier to read than what we call proprietary file formats, like Microsoft Excel files or custom databases. And the CSV file format has become effectively the de facto common data format for sharing tabular data between systems. We'll look at exactly what the CSV file format means in just a moment, but understand that the CSV stands for comma separated values. It's a plain text file that's easy to work with in programming languages such as Python or any other general purpose language out there. So let's take a look. First, let's talk about the idea of tabular data. You can imagine a simple data table where our columns are the high temperature, the low temperature, and the precipitation, where high and low are in terms of Fahrenheit. And each row of this is perhaps the weather record for a given day. And we don't have the date that it's associated with, but you could imagine other columns as well, like the day or the time of the recording. Uh, and this is what we call a data table. It is easy and built into systems like Microsoft Excel and Google Sheets to be able to save this type of a spreadsheet data out to a file that's a CSV formatted file. So let me show you an example of what this data might look like in a CSV. So I've set up this file named weather.csv and I've gone ahead and made it in my data directory of my workspace. And I would encourage you to go ahead and pause the video here and replicate this data file if you'd like to follow along. The key thing to recognize coming from the file where we have those uh, same rows and columns is to notice the relationship between these things. And if I could point out uh, some features in specific, I would say that each line of this file, so notice line one, corresponds to each line of my spreadsheet, right? And so we think of this in terms of rows. So this is an individual row and it's made up of three columns. The high temperature is, has a value of 77. And so in the CSV format, that same value is placed before the first comma. And so the reason why this is called a comma separated values file is that notice that the, these commas are separating the columns. Because this data is very regular, uh, you'll notice that these columns align in this example, but there's no need for that to be the case. You could imagine you know, numbers where are certain columns where things are, go out of line. So it turns out for humans, CSVs aren't always the most natural data sources to look at and to interact with because there's no guarantee that your things actually line up, you, that your uh, uh, cells in your data table line up uh, geometrically as you would expect in a spreadsheet or a database. But this file format is very easily read by programs that you would wanna write. And so we're gonna look at in this video how to use Python's built-in CSV library to read a file of this nature. I'm gonna go ahead and begin by, uh, after setting up my, my data file, adding a new file to my lessons directory. Uh, you can put this wherever you'd like, and I'm gonna label this ls30 and CSV reading.py, right? And I'm going to go ahead and import a uh, special function from Python's built-in CSV library. So I'm gonna say from CSV, import uh, dictionary reader, right? You can imagine that uh, there are many different ways you could read lines of information from a CSV file like this. And one of those is just to read each line and think of your values as individual lists of values or strings that are broken up from one another. Well, in, in Python has support for that. In this video, because you already understand what a dictionary is from our previous lessons on the same subject, it helps to think of each row as a dictionary where we have our key associated with some value. So for row two, for example, we would expect a dictionary where high is 81, low is 30, 53, and precipitation is 0.12, right? So this dict reader is going to, uh, produce to us, it's gonna use that first row of our CSV file to uh, set up the keys for each of the dictionary values that we return for each line. In this example, I'm not going to use a main function and structure this in terms of uh, a full program. What I'm going to do is just present this as a script and encourage you 
to know and, and, and emphasize that when you go and use this in a real world uh, program, you should reorganize this uh, to not have everything out in the global uh, scope and to instead use things like a main function and to organize your program in terms of functions. But to quickly demonstrate the features of reading a CSV file in Python, let's go ahead and set up a file handle which is a going to uh, hold our reference to an open file that we're working with. So we're going to use the open command once again, or the open function, and we're going to open data slash weather.csv. Right? We're going to open it for reading, and the encoding is UTF-8. Right? When we open a file, we always need to remember to close it. So I'm going to say file handle dot close down here at the end. Right. The CSV libraries dictionary reader function will produce to us something that is iterable that we can use a for in loop in order to work with. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and set up our reader. So CSV reader is a dictionary reader of file handle. Right. So what we're saying here is I want to construct a new reader. And what it's going to do is as we read each line, it's going to remember the first line of our CSV is producing the keys of our dictionary. And then each subsequent line is going to produce an object that is whose values are associated with those keys, right? So uh, perhaps the simplest way uh, to demonstrate this is to go ahead and say for row in CSV reader, print row, right? And this is a very simple uh, demonstration, but let's go ahead and see what happens here. So this would be uh, how we're able to read through each line of a file that I've stored in a data directory in my workspace, and its name is weather.csv. So Python m lessons.ls30 CSV reading, All right? And notice what we get printed back out is each of those four rows in the data set. And each is a dictionary where the key is associated with some value. And this is pretty cool, right? We didn't have to write uh, a custom parser or we didn't have to, to read each of those lines and process them ourselves. The CSV library has some built-in functionality for doing this. Notice though that each of these values that's associated with our key is uh, a string value. So we may ultimately, if we're writing a program to process data and we've got numerical or floating point data here, uh, we would need to do a little bit of extra work on our end to convert these strings to floating point values that we could then compute and analyze. Right? There are other libraries, and we may explore some in future lessons, uh, that will automatically do that conversion as well. But they aren't built into the Python uh, standard library in the way that CSV is. So this is something that you can depend upon being available to you anywhere you're using Python, right? Uh, just for a little bit of uh, additional demonstration here and to show you a little bit about um, the typings that we might use, what, let's say we wanted to read all of this data in to a list of rows and actually then um, compute the average of one of these rows. Right, and, and I'm still going to continue doing this all in the global scope. Uh, and you should really write individual functions to do this in a better structured way. Uh, great. So from typing, import list and dictionary. And these two types will be used because what we're going to try and do is uh, set up our table. And the type of our table is going to be a list of dictionaries where we have string and uh, float values associated with them, right? So this is going to be our table and it's initially going to be an empty list. Notice that the type of object that each item in our list is going to be a dictionary, which stores other objects. And so this is one of our first examples of a compound type uh, that is storing other compound types is, is being demonstrated. So for each row, what are we going to do? Well, we need to build up um, a a processed row that has those string values converted to floating point values. So let's go ahead and set up another dictionary. And that dictionary will be uh, a, um, a float row. That's type will be a dictionary from string to float. 
and it will initially be empty, right? Since we know that row is a dictionary from string to string, that means it contains the key, which is our column name, and the value, which is the value associated with it for the given row, uh, we can go ahead and write another for in loop that will be a nested loop and say for each key in row, or I might actually name this column. So for each column in the row, what we want to do is access, we want to say float row for that particular column is going to be assigned. And here's where we're going to convert the string value associated with the input file to a floating point value. So we're going to say float and we're reading from the row for the given column. Right? And once we've done this for each of our columns, we can then append this particular row to our table. So table.append float row. All right. So there's a lot going on in these few lines of code. We're reading each row of our CSV into a dictionary, and that dictionary's name is row. And so each of the keys is going to be the column. We're setting up a brand new dictionary that's going to hold a dictionary from string to a float, right? Our, our row is from string to string, meaning that the values are all strings. Well, we want really uh, a dictionary where our values are stored as floating points. So we go ahead and we set up a brand new dictionary for each of our rows that we're gonna work with and uh, give it the correct type, which is string for our keys and floating point for our values. And then we loop through each column, which is the name of each column in our given input row, right? And so we're saying, okay, we're gonna take that value stored in the current row and column convert it to a floating point, and then store that value in the new dictionary we're building up at that same column name. So the what we're doing here is we're converting a dictionary from string to string to a dictionary uh, from string to float uh, for our keys and values. And then we are appending that dictionary to our table, right? And so when this for loop completes, we should probably print it out and see what we've got. So print table. And I'm going to try rerunning this example, right? Now, this is a little bit hard to parse uh, or to see in its entirety, but notice that we've got our opening square bracket and closing square bracket. So we're seeing a list representation here. And then the first item of our list is the entry where uh, the key high is associated with. And now notice this is no longer a string representation of 81. We've converted it to a floating point, meaning we can now uh, carry out arithmetic operations on it. And the same with all of the other rows. So we now have a list of all of the data in our program that we can then go process, right? And so uh, just real quickly, if we wanted to average, say, uh, the high temperature, we could set up a uh, high sum, which is the floating point uh, total. And we could, uh, let's say, for each uh, row in our table, high sum is going to increase by that row's high key value, right? So each row has a key named high, and we're going to take that value associated with that and add it onto our sum. And then when we're done, we can say print uh, high temperature average is, and we can uh, convert to a string the result of high sum divided by the length of our table, which is the number of rows in our table, right? And so I'm gonna, just gonna scroll this up and clear my screen. And if I were to try this again, we see that the high temperature average was 73 in this small data set, right? And if we looked at the values to sort of desk check 81, 70, 72, 766, uh, I could, if I wanted to in Python, prove to myself in the REPL, uh, 81 plus 70 plus 77 plus 66 divided by four, 73.5. So I can confirm to myself that uh, this average did in fact read in that file's uh, worth of data and uh, produce some result. Again, doing all of this outside of any functions is not encouraged, but we're trying to just demonstrate in this video the uh, behavior and the capabilities of this dictionary reader in working with uh, a CSV file. 
To convince you that this is in fact um, reading this particular file, we can add another row. So I might add a row with a crazy outlier value in the high, and, and we could maybe tell that that's certainly not gonna be reasonable. Uh, a low of 53 and another precipitation of let's say 0.1, right? And save my data file. And now notice if I run this exact same program again, oops. So I open up a new terminal, Python M lessons.ls30 CSV reading. We've got a much higher high temperature average because of that extreme outlier I added to my data table. But hopefully you can get the sense that now we don't have to hard code our data into our program. We can read that in from a file like this weather.csv file. And as long as we're working with some software like a spreadsheet or a database that produces CSVs, which just about any program that's responsible for uh, storing and manipulating and, and searching and archiving data can produce a CSV on your behalf. Uh, you can write programs that can begin to process, analyze, chart, and otherwise explore and investigate uh, data coming from those other data sources. So this is a quick introduction to reading CSV files in Python. I would encourage you when you're getting comfortable with this concept uh, to use the dictionary reader that's built in. That's the easiest to work with when you're just getting started. And later on, we might look at uh, the pandas, which is a separate third party library that has built in CSV capabilities and a much more powerful um, construct of what a data table is. We might explore that, which can uh, take some of these things that we're having to, to work on ourselves and, and build up our own little abstractions for uh, and actually carry out higher level operations at the library level. But for now, I think it's very valuable and good practice to work directly with CSV files in the way that this video demonstrated. And in an upcoming challenge, you'll be working with uh, reading in a data set and actually processing it in a much better structured program. So this is how you can open a file, read it as a CSV, and work with each row as a dictionary where your keys are the column headings and your values are that row's particular items.